Welcome to Codecom Gadget YouTube channel. I hope our video are doing good. In the last sessions, we have discussed about how we can do the deployment via CI/CD, and we have seen how we can enable the Kubernetes deployment with the Dockerization of our, you know, machine learning model. In this video, we will be discussing about MLflow. So MLflow is a tool like you know, it uh, belongs to open source and it's widely used by ML machine learning engineers and data scientists. So there are a number of usage why it is widely used in the current market by machine learning engineers and data scientists. So one of the reason like you know it will auto log and it will save the metrics whenever your model is training and the, uh, it is getting evaluated with the trying data and test data. So there's the key feature why everybody are using MLflow in the current market. I even, even it is more demandable tool uh, in a machine learning life cycle. So in this video, I brought few points where ML flow is resolving and it is, um, you know, using getting uh, more advantages while you are working with the machine learning life cycle. So the first one, ML flow tracking and ML flow projects, ML flow models and ML flow model registry, ML flow CLI and ML flow auto logging and ML flow end to end stages. So as I said, ML flow tracking, which means like, you know, whenever you're working with your machine learning uh, projects. So it's it's a uh, it's a tedious task to track all your metrics on any spreadsheet or anywhere, and that's the reason if you have integrated MLflow with your source code, and uh, for this you should run your MLflow on any one of the server. It can be Windows or it can be Linux. So once you install on uh, any uh, server, so what you can do, you can integrate the uh, MLflow URL in your source code. So whenever you do a uh, machine learning, uh, you know, model training and model evaluation, it is going to give us some metrics like, you know, it is going to give us success rates and it's going to give accuracy and all, you know, during training and, you know, evaluation. So those points, so where, what MLflow do, will do, MLflow will track all your experiments over, you know, uh, MLflow UI. So MLflow UI is amazing because in the MLflow, you can track all your, you know, experiments. Even you can log experiment based on the IDs also. You can create the dictionaries and you can create the directories over there. So that is why, you know, MLflow is easier, uh, you know, it's easier to track all your uh, metrics and logs on, on, on a remote server. And not only this, MLflow is giving a uh, you know, wide range of you know, uh, visualization. So you can uh, statistically you can look into that which model and which experiment has driven good results or good accuracy. So that's about uh, MLflow tracking. And when it comes to MLflow projects, so let's example, you have been running your machine learning code in your local environment and you would like to shift from your local environment to uh, some other environment. It can be, uh, you know, remote or it can be, you would like to share the same source code from your environment to other environment. So that situation, MLflow can use to package all your source code and it can shift to other environment. So that's what we call as MLflow project. When it comes to MLflow model, like, you know, once you train your model, so you'd like to package your model, right? So it's a tedious task to do uh, without MLflow and, you know, you need to package it as, as a desired, uh, desired shape. So from the local and, you know, again, the, uh, the remote has to be have all the dependencies. So MLflow is going to resolve such an issue that, you know, it is going to pack all your, you know, it's going to pack all your models and then you can shift to any location. And the other one is like MLflow model registry. Similar way how we store all our source code into uh, source code management such as GitHub or GitLab or any other repository. The same way, so when your model has trained and when you have packaged your model, we should have a registry where we can store all our models. Because in every day, like, you know, we are going to do a number of, you know, um, experiments on a same model with uh, different data sets. That's the only reason you know, we should have a registry where we can store all our models whenever we done the in experiments. So MLflow is giving such a space where you can, you know, try and it and even MLflow is going to track all your metrics and logs. And even it is giving amazing feature where you can ship your entire source code and even it can ship your entire, you know, uh, machine learning model once you trained it. And you can, sh it is giving amazing feature called as a model registry. So you can keep all your models over there by using the MLflow as a tool. And MLflow CLI. So once you save your machine learning model and model registry called as MLflow, so by, via CLI, you can pull the same model into the any other project. So that's the dynamic feature the MLflow has been giving on. 
And the next one, ML flow auto logging. So, you know, if you want to enable, uh, you know, manual, you can do that. Otherwise, once you enable the auto logging, so whenever you're running uh, all the experiments, so ML flow automatically get log all your metrics from your source code, uh, you know, whenever you run the model training and evaluation, and it will store into machine learning UI uh, wherever you have installed ML flow. And second thing, end to end machine learning stages. So the correct one you have heard. So MLflow can be used for end-to-end -end machine learning stages, which means like you know we can use MLflow as a collecting the data, pre-processing it in EDE and feature engineering and training it. So it can be used for end-to-end -end machine learning, uh, you know, lifecycle also. But you know the wide range of focus are from you know MLflow tracking to till auto logging. So that's uh, uh, the the major features has MLflow has been providing if you have integrated into your source code. And it is also giving end-to-end -end machine learning lifecycle. You can utilize, uh, you can take advantage of it if you have a you know small uh, range of projects where you, you know you, you don't want to depend on other projects or you don't want to depend on other tools to make more complicated. So you can integrate the ML flow along with the source code, and you know you can perform all your you know machine learning operations, and you can get you know all the metrics and logs more visualized, and accordingly you can you can pick which model has been giving good, good accuracy and process and a lot and all. So that's why you know MLflow has been using in this current market widely. And other than this, like you know, um, the adoption case, like you know, it can be adopted as well, along with your CI/CD. So whenever you're running a CI/CD, you, you can integrate MLflow along with your source code. When you run it, so even along with the source code is getting tracked and it getting logged in your uh, CI/CD log. Even it is getting logged into MLflow, uh, you know, server also. So you have a you know bi-directional way of finding the logs and you know finding the metrics and finding the accuracy of our machine learning model. So that's all about you know just theoretical information of machine learning uh, you know uh, uh, lifecycle with MLflow. And I will do uh, uh, you know few more uh, playlists on MLflow, how it's going to track and how we can integrate MLflow, how we can install MLflow on different servers, and uh, it can be a, a Linux and it can be a Windows, and uh, how we can even install MLflow by using your Visual Studio. So I will show you what all ways we can install it, and even you can install it into your, your Docker, and you can run the same Docker container on Kubernetes. There are, you know, multiple ways you can install MLflow on a servers and again you can integrate your source code into your machine learning project. So we'll look into that all the uh, concept that I brought over here uh, theoretically and I'll show you how it can be used to perform all this activity. And as I said, like, you know, MLflow can be integrated into your source code, but before that you need to install the MLflow on any one other remote server. And it can be local also, but if you're, uh, you know, working on your local server, it can be uh, on your local collaboration. But what if you would like to make a team collaboration? Because MLflow can um, giving a vast range of you know uh, feature that you can bring all your team collaboration. So team can be used a single server or multiple server to log their machine learning uh, models and metrics. So let's example I'm um, having using this as a server and I have rented over on uh, uh, any kind of cloud provider. It can be AWS or it can be Azure. It can be GCP. So I've been using Ubuntu here and uh, I've installed MLflow here. So MLflow can give us some kind of you know URL or IP address. So what I will do here, I have my source code. So here my code uh, where I have written all about my machine learning lifecycle can be data collection, pre-processing and all. So while I'm doing training, so what I will do, hey, while you are training, whatever metrics has been uh, driven and while you are evaluating, so whatever metrics has been driven with my source code, what is going to do is going to call this particular IP address of my MLflow and along with your experimental ID, so it will go and log here all your metrics. So as I just said, like you know, MLflow is giving amazing UI. So you can get that IP address logged into your browser. It can be your this let's example, this is your local environment. So you can browse the particular IP address and you can see what all metrics are there into the particular IP address and how it is giving amazing UI. And you can look into the whole statistical way of you know logs and you can compare what all experiments has been giving a be better features in your machine learning lifecycle. So what this is about, like, you know, you can push all your logs from your code to your, you know, um, machine learning uh, remote server where it has installed on Ubuntu uh, virtual machine. So once you have done it, you have uh, logged here. And as I said, so machine learning can be used to store your um, models. It can be used as a model registry. So for example, you have, you know, uh, created a model, you got, got trained, it got evaluated, it tested, everything is working fine. So what you will do, you can, you know, push your model from your local to this, you know, MLflow uh, as a tool. So let's consider this is the model. 
it is resides here and i would like to use the model from my uh, melflow my own server to any other projects let's consider you know your project has been running here so this is your project where you have been working on a uh, uh, where you are working on another project let's example this is a project one i call it as a p1 and this is a project two. so i'd like to use a model which was trained by p1 so this model i pushed from my local to uh, so this is my remote server so i pushed over here this is the p1 uh, model it is available here so i just said like in you know, mlflow is giving us a cli and it's giving a api also so with the mlflow api what you can do you can connect to this particular server and you can pull the model which uh, got trained over here and you can utilize that model into the p2 products so this kind of features you know the mlflow is giving on because like an mlflow can be act as a model registry so once model has been pushed over there it can be pulled into not only this project it can pull into multiple projects so that's why i said like you know mlflow can be mostly uh, uh, used for team collaboration also like example like example one of the team has pushed from the push the uh, any model from their local to this remote repository and if you want to use the take advantage of that model to any other project so you can pull via you know api or cli with mlflow so this kind of amazing features mlflow has been giving on you know you know machine learning life cycle that's why it has been using widely into this current market in machine learning life cycle so i think that's all for this lecture i hope i have given a just glimpse of what is mlflow and why we use it and what is the main advantage of mlflow and all and uh, i hope it is clear for everybody and uh, i'll keep continuing on this mlflow series and how we can integrate this with via cicd and uh, by integrating into gitlab or azure devops or any other cicd platform that you can use in your machine learning project so i'll brought all this you know tracking projects model registry model cli and pulling and pushing the model from local to image uh, this uh, model registry and uh, model to your local uh, the way we are doing here right so and we'll see how we can collaborate it how we can see the statistical way of comparing the metrics from uh, one experiment to another experiment so how we can pick the best uh, experiment or best model on top of it like you know while comparing in uh, machine learning uh, amazing ui so Stay tuned for this channel. So we'll be uh, doing great things, and we are going to have a multiple sessions on MLflow, and we'll end the series by you know understanding all those things, and we'll keep going on. So until then, thank you for watching this video. Share this YouTube uh, video of Code Kam Kaji to your friends and family members who would like to learn machine learning operations and machine learning tools. Until then, thank you for watching, and stay tuned. And bye bye. Hi everyone.